And look at that, that is a tough looking buggy. Hi guys, Brett here from Hearns, and I've got Simon back with me as we're going to do episode number four, four of our HB Racing E819RS. And we're going we're to put the parts on the right way tonight. We're going to put the parts on the right way, we're going to put the body mount on, you'll yep. notice here. Yep. We've got the front gearbox done, the centre the center diff is in the car, and we've got the bone ready to hook up once the front gearbox goes in. So let's get stuck into it, what are we up to? We're up to uh, bag F. Four. F4, Freddy 4. That'll be <clears throat> the extra extra strong front arms. Ooh, that's for, stiff. For hitting, yeah. hitting the pipes. How hard are they? I'm going to I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna be relentless. I'm going to snap those bad boys in half, mate. I, I've already been into bag F4, having a bit of a, bit of a poke around. A bit of a poke around. I'm just going to have a couple of screws there, mate. and Get rid of that. Got a bit of a, a little bit of assembly lead here. So, so what setup are you going for? What hot setup? Are you, are you uh, I'm going? Gonna go are you, for you going kit? Because I'll just get the kit. Yeah, parts. just kit, which is two holes up. It's three. No, no, that's just a description. The the kit is on page thirty-three. Wow. So, so if all these books, uh, and that way they can evolve the kit setup, and just keep the same picture in the book. Do you know what I mean? No. Does it make I'm, sense? I'm confused already. Yeah, well, it might be a bit hard for you. You know, like, just, we've got a little, little thing here. So, say it slowly. Can you do? They keep the kit set up. Can you, can you, do, can you put it in braille? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not sure. And this is a standard two dot B block, which is one point uh, four. All right, so, so hang on, hang on, before you jump. So I've just put the two dot pills in the A block. Yes. So you're saying the rear B block isn't adjustable. No. you got to buy a block. Yeah, that's how they keep it tough. So they only have the pills in the front. Oh, so this is like the eight scale um, way. Yeah, so you adjust the kick up from the B block. I had one of these and I can't remember that, to be honest. Really? Yep. It's I had, a really I had, good foolproof system. So they have uh, five five dot increments. Uh, yeah, no, no. I can, remember, I can remember, that, but I can't remember that the rear was non-adjustable because I had an E. 817. This is the front. The rear uses a similar thing, so the... No, no, the, the, the B block, I can't yep. remember if the 817 was like this. Yeah, it was. It was? Yeah. Did you have one? Yeah. I've still got it. I kick it in the basement. With Nan. <laughs> <laughs> have you lost? <laughs> Go away. <laughs> Hold it together. <laughs> You're losing him. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Does she get it cracking in the middle of the night? <laughs> from the starter box. <laughs> Nan's on the starter box. <laughs> Nan put the buggy there. <laughs> oh, you're an animal, son. Uh, <laughs> you lost it. This is torture. <clears throat> I'm glad you think that. So, we've got two holes pointing uh, down. We want to point them up, I think. Two holes up. If we can, if we're going for the kit setup, two holes up. Two that's, holes up. That's not the that's not the way it's showing it here. Um, that's that's three holes. So yeah, it's but it's still different. showing it down. You never said about being up. Now, uh, well, we can rewind this and listen to the uh, dialogue. Would you like to? No, the viewers won't like it, and we'll have to laugh again about <laughs> Nand. <laughs> I know, right? So <coughs> that locates into the chassis. So two holes up. You sure? That's the way I had it. No, no. Yes, it is. Yeah, two holes. That's, no, no, that's the way I had it. We can. The viewers will be able to watch this. And I, I think Brett's making it very confusing here. Really? Yep. Um, and I don't actually have the app. You know how you had that fancy little app on your phone, your telephone. Yeah. You can do that actually with these. Well, um, would you like me to to have a look at because that? Because you can have a look exactly at the correlation between what you are running. You mean the degrees? Yeah. Yeah. You kick up, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, you kick up and you degrees. Okay. What do you want? Tell me. Well, what are we going to do? We're going to assemble it. So, yeah. we start with the, the hinge pinners. So, I've got a. Don't you really want to screw that on first? Yeah, we can. Um, I don't you... know that it's all going to. Well, the hinge pin's got to go through. You know the best thing about this, though? These screws have to come out like three times. Why? 
Uh, I can't remember. We'll see when we get there. Okay. It's been a little bit. My suggestion is don't tighten them up all the no. way. No. We'll just locate them. But I have pre-tapped. We've talked about this before. Yeah. I have pre-tapped all these. So that's why I'm able just to do it with by hand as I opposed need, to. I think you should have like an 18 volt Makita. I've seen it. And just as it just like get into it. Yeah. I've actually got these new tools. I'll show you. You'll love it. These new Aramax power tips. Oh, with it's, magnets on them. It's and uh, sound a bit like Tim the Toolman Taylor. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Oh Jesus. Binford. Binford. No, not Binford. M more like Bimbo for you. Oh, you're looking good, mate. Have you got them tight or they? No. I'm just <clears> pulling it up. Back it up a smidge. Yep. Give us a little bit of wiggle room. So you got one mil shims, the plastic one mil shims here. Yep. And then you got your little stainless or little steel shims. And then at the back, you've got the stainless and I think it says two mil, is that correct? We've got one mil. No, two mil. Oh yeah. Two millimeter. That. Starting at the block. Working our way forward. Don't, don't, what's this shim here that goes on first? That one. It goes on the, oh, you've already got it on? Yeah, that one. Oh, yeah. I, I missed that part, sorry. That's all right, keep up, mate. Yep, I'm, I'm working on it. <clears throat> this is your favourite part, isn't it, putting these shims and... I just like watching you stuff, I mean, put it together. There's a handy little tip here that I'm going to... Usually I polish the hinge pins, I'll be honest. Why? They're, Why? They're, because they're coated, they're, they're really, like... They're, they're nice and brown. Yes, but these... Are you talking about how tight the, the bushes are on the high tight, I don't like how Look, tight these things are. They're not tight. They're tight, mate. Oh, my God. What? You just... just give a bit of hand finishing <clears> there. It won't kill you. You don't just hand finish at turn one. It depends who's behind you or in front of you. Well, nobody behind me, mate. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Well, I suppose when you're Q12. That's right. In the bump up. Yep. So I've got the one mil on there. We need to hurry up and get this built so we can go out and do like a wrecking crew um, video. What do you mean wrecking? What's wrecking crew? I'll take it out for a test drive. No, no wrecking crew here, mate. Just class. Keep it classy, mate. Keep it classy at all times. Then we're going to stack these bad boys in there. So we're just going to go for a middle, um, <clears throat> middle wheelbase setting, would you call it? No, we'll just go kit. Kit setup? Yep, kit. We're going kit. Kit, kit. One mil. Look Ta out for the little mouse thing there, mate. Yeah, that mouse is giving me the irrits today. Is it? Yeah. It's getting in my way. Don't let it upset you, mate. Don't let fear hold your back. I think, I think you need the silver, the silver washer on before the plastic. Okay, are you? Oh my god! I'm just like I'm just well, pointing out some facts here. Yeah, and do you know why that is? To stop it from binding. Yeah, keep it slippery. Yeah, because the last thing you want is binding and mud and stuff to get in there and wear out all your arms and all your bushes. And now, and you got the one mil in. Yep. You sure? Yep. There's a there's a nut. There's my little nut. Is there five point five or five? That is a five point five. You sure? I'm pretty sure. It is too. It says in the manual, 5.5. .5. Let's do the other side. I want to get this thing. Sweet. Where's the hinge pin? Oh, that. <laughs> You're just playing tricks on me now. No, you need the one mil washer first. One mil. One mil plastic. Plastic fantastic. Yep. I'm just going to sit here tonight and watch because I'll find it As really... opposed to any other night. Yep, I just find it very amusing. Don't pretend like you do stuff on this show, mate. I we don't. There's a simple fact, I don't. <laughs> you entertain and you bring joy to the world. No? Oh, look at that stiff arm. You're doing a fine job there, Brett. Oh, look at that. There's the, there's the nut. I'll just get this one. I'll just get oh, this look pump. at that. Here's the other grub screw. Oh, this guy. You watch, you've been very difficult tonight, Simon. <laughs> I'll rehearse today. Have you? <laughs> <laughs> I feel sorry for that poor Evo box. <laughs> I had I had a long day of therapy. Did you? Mm-hmm. 
Look at that. I've put a bit of, uh, see that? I've put a bit of the Loctite in there. Can I ask you a really stupid question? Mm -hmm. Why did you put the screws in back to front? Don't make me look bad. Well, they come in from the back. Um, they could do. They do. Oh my god. I can't operate under these conditions. Well, the conditions are fine. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the conditions. I can't operate. I'm telling you Because now, when mate. you put the grub screw in, you're going to be locking it on the thread. I can't. No, there's a big flat there. Now, that was a bit silly, wasn't it? Why? Are you going back the other way, eh? Yeah. No? Because no. well, if I can hold it together in one spot. That's not the first radio. He, he's looking a bit wobbly there, people. That's all that chicken I've just had. Oh. No? What was it again? Hey, yellow, mate. Yeah. So we'll get this one in. So and then push it's, it through. It's, it's in the right way this time? Definitely in the right way this yeah. time. I just thought I'd just, you know, have a well, look I'm at it. I'm glad that you're here. So am I. Thanks, mate. No worries. Any time. Means the world to me. Any time. See how my washers didn't fall out then? Did you like that trick? That was awesome. That's a takeaway. You can use that one. Yeah, right. I'm used to doing things a couple of times. So, <laughs> that's only needed when you can't do it right the first time. Well, potentially... I'll do this side as well. <laughs> Don't let do me want, stop you. Do you want me to do it both? How about you do both sides? And I might look at I might look at what is required for the next step. And what do you think is the next step? Whatever you're not doing. F five is the uh, fitment of the sway bar. Is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, I love fitting the sway bar. And the most important part of any RC car for Brett. Bumper bar? The front bumper bar. It's only because people get in my way. It's not because I don't respect them, it's just I don't like them. Is that how it works, is it? Yeah. No, it's not really because I... I re no, no, I'll remember that because someone, when I was at the track trying to just have a casual drive around, someone kept getting in my way. Nobody ever... And then they drove straight into me from the side. Yeah, but it's not... And it was just like this dirty old frog. Dirty old... Mate, there's no reason. Look at this. Now I've got it all backwards. Brett's just having a little moment here. A little moment. Of no clarity. Well, the claret's about to come out. Well, we're only two hours into the show and we've just got the two hinge pins in. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? <laughs> this has been a really good build so far. I, t I tell you what, if we don't hurry, Nen's going to be bored silly. <laughs> That's how people. Nan's not going to have her pills tonight. I found it. <laughs> in the carpet. Well, I tell you what, you're in form. Make sure that the tool goes in the right way this time. You are in form. There you go. Thank you, Squire. Put, put, put your nut on. on. Put your nut on. Um, I actually need another five and a half mil. I'm going to have to break out the tomato. No, just use the little to me a um, T-wrench there, four-way, whatever you want to call it, a handy little T-wrench that it's good, isn't everybody it? will have one or two of those laying around. Well, especially if they've been building Tamiya's. Frogs. Yep. You name it, grasshoppers. You'd be a grasshopper man. No. Hornet. No. Not a hornet man? My, my very first RC car was a Tamiya Rough Rider. Yeah? Yep. Did you win? Did I win? Was it a race car? Yeah, you know, like it's it's the same series as the Super Champ. That sounds very you. And that was in 1986. You've been doing it that long and you're still no good at it. Stop <laughs> <laughs> making that for me, people. Um, I'm not the one putting the A-arms on. No? No. Clearly. <laughs> I did have a break. For 24 years. Oh, thank God. Probably the hobby probably thrived while you were gone. It just boomed. It escalated. <laughs> Beyond all proportions. Oh! Now, how rigid's that? Oh. 
Just going to pinch these up. I, I just would like to say, not every episode is going to be this painful, everyone. Why not? Are you going to help? I might just... Oh! We might have to change those droop screws a little bit. Oh, just a Somebody's little. wound them all the way. Two mil, mate. Two millimeters. I'm just gonna wind it down flash so I can. You have put the arms on the right way, haven't you? Oh, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going home. If anything, I'm just gonna tip all these screws out of your list and see what we can lose. Oh, we're going everywhere. All right. Tell me, what would you like next, Brett? Nothing. I want a holiday. <laughs> You're not getting it. I want a cut. Can I have the 1.5, please? Kind of really. While Brett's doing that, I'm just going to put the little grub screws what, into what, the sway bar. What retains. is Brett doing? Simon's taking it upon himself to get these arms on. Yep. I Only just, he wants them done right or something. I, I just know. felt I the need to have a go at it. I feel the need, the need for speed. There's your meal space, mate. Thanks, mate. Uh, so, we got arms on. Don't drop that one too. Um, we'll get the sway bar. I've got a little sway bar. They're really little threads, and, and people tend there, to over There they them. are. There they are. You can explain that. So, they're really tiny little threads in these. They're like a two mil, two mil thread, I want to say. Could even be 2.5 two by they're 1.5 mil they're 1.5 oh those yeah so they're yeah. a two mil thread um and they just hold on that and people oh. tend to overdo them there's no need to no you're they're not going to run loose no and there's a little grub screw in the end there which you've taken the liberty of doing up so i'm just going to undo them because we don't want them to bind but i'll usually do the sway bars as the as the final part of the assembly so really? Little... Like you like wait till the um No 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 before I Oh you mean down. adjustment? Yeah. Well get the arms on, you know. Get the car like just before the shocks actually go on. Yep. To make sure that it's free. Um I oh, thanks Simon, you've been a great help tonight. I couldn't have done it without you. Just excuse me for you know, like getting in the way there. Are you reaching over? Yep, yeah, being rude. Look out for the little mouse. It's taking a hiding. The mouse in the house is getting flogged. Yeah, I don't know about that. But mm. now these will be a bit tight. No, I haven't over tightened them. Yep. So what we need, to, what we're going to need to do is just go over them when it's all assembled in the chassis and stuff yep. like that. But at so least I'm the front arms are on the right way. Finally. Yep. It was a mission. Now I put a little bit of thread lock on there. And why you and do it's that? it's only a tiny bit, really just to seal the thread. Do you know what that's for? Um, do you know what I like about that idea? Well, it saves your hinge pin from coming loose. So, no it doesn't. If the nut comes off the front, yeah. the hinge pin doesn't come out. Doesn't fall off. You still finish the race. Right, without, I really like that idea. Without losing the hinge pin. And it doesn't need to be torqued up. It just needs to, so it doesn't come loose. Yep. That's why I put a little bit. Yep. Because it's just alloy and you can just ream it so, through. People so, people will do it with their <clears throat> Makita. <clears throat> Here we have the front, the front with the arms installed correctly. The hinge pins installed correctly. Yeah, we took it. We took it. We took yep. a while. And the mount installed correctly. It's been a tough. <laughs> it's been a big week. I don't know what's happening. Let's go. <laughs> sway bar. Sway bar on. Sway bar on. So there's writing on the sway bar. I like to face it up Ooh, so you can read it for later. We can always get the verniers out. Yep. There's a, there's a preloaded screw. Preloaded screw. For you. Thank you, sir. It didn't even end up on the floor this Do time. Do you know what? It's great having two 1.5 mil drivers because like a surgeon, I can just pass them to you. Okay. That'd be a good nurse. You'd be like Dr. Bob off the Muppets. Dr. Bob? Yep. What's Dr. Bob? Don't you watch the Muppets? No. Dr. Bob was the I, surgeon. I am the Muppets. 
Let's just not go there again. Oh, come on, mate. <clears throat> it's been a testing... Um, what, what number is it tonight? This is episode four, mate. Episode and you've been, four. This is the second build that we've... Oh, this is my second episode second. on this one. Yeah. I think it's going to be my and last. It's, it's ours. <laughs> our guest. I couldn't do it without you. So I'm just going to do these up until they just seat. There's no reason, because I do have a grub screw in there to adjust up the preload later. And people do replace their gearbox cases all the time because... You only got to you only got to tighten them up until they stop. Yeah, that's it. That's it. You don't keep tightening. They're not going to rattle loose. I promise you. No. That's it. Look at that. And I will adjust the preload on there later. Now we put in the little doovies in the arms. Is that what's happening? Can the people see? So it says cap head screw. Oh no, that's done. That was those ones. But it's not showing. It's not showing the screws for that on this particular page. Okay. So you got the next step is to put that, the bulkhead assembly, on the actual chassis. Yep. With my favourite part being the bumper bar. Now we're at the point now where we've built the gearbox. You need to lube up the crown wheel and pinion. And I want to lube up the crown wheel and pinion. The reason that we don't do that earlier is because... It doesn't make a mess. I'll probably make a mess. Anyway, <clears throat> so we're going to, I'm going to help Brett out here because it will be a challenge. So I'm just going to turn it while he sticks... This it looks like mud. Is that mud? Um, sort of copper coloured. That is plenty. That is plenty, and that is copper grease. You see, we just we, we we spread it into the teeth of the crown wheel and just turned it until it's all the way around, and and the pinion inside is nice and covered. Yeah. And it doesn't sound so doesn't sound so rowdy a anymore. A talented person like you could can see the the mesh, no? Yeah, I can see the mess. Yes, I can. You can see the mesh. Ah, oh, yes. No, you can see the mesh from the, the patterns in the, the, the lovely copper. I think mesh. the heel and toe on the teeth are not quite right, but anyway, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. Can you just wipe, wipe that mess off there, please? I would love to. I'm going to get it in my ear in a minute. Whatever works. Well, usually when I'm handling grease, it's usually what happens. And then <clears> I get this one, the dog bone. And in the front gearbox... Why don't you just stick the dog bone in the grease? I will. And you wouldn't have had to get your screwdriver so dirty. That's alright, I don't mind a dirty screwdriver. Oh. That just helps it slide up <laughs> the boot. So we're going to put this jobby in under the clip. And he's going to make a mess. I'm going to try my best not to, folks. He's made a mess definitely made a mess all right be careful there doctor and I have the um, the mop up because there's too much blood here suction nurse all right mate come on I just don't like untidy work I'm glad we'll marry that sucker up look at that and it sits in the little groove in the bulk in the chassis and voila and it all marries up now I always after I run these cars in always take it apart and retighten everything up including the arms it's alright mate I'll do it you do it well there's really only room for one only room for one yeah two and a half two point five did you tap the threads in them? Yeah. You're going to put any? Like you're going to put any grease on the screw? I am. Uh, how about? I thought my nurse would have done that. Uh, she's on strike. Low, she... low pay. Aren't they having a bad time at the moment? That's... All the industries are having a bad time. How's the gearbox industry, mate? Just like normal, greasy. Greasy. Yep. Is that the gearbox as well, or the? Shady characters doing the work. Yeah, well, it could be a bit of both. At least we're not working on a Muncie. Who would work on one of those? Somebody who likes old cars. Yeah. Look at the look how easy these screws are going in. 
Do you know how tight these are when you if you if you do don't not... tap the threads, they are near impossible to get in without uh -huh. wrecking the head of the screw. Because yeah. look, even though even if you tap tap them, they're still hard to put in. Yeah. You just bent the chassis. Bent the chassis? Yeah. These nine steps, it's, if you hex wrenches, I was just about are to say, really good. I was just about to say, if you're building one of these and you get to a point where it won't go in anymore, don't stop and wait. Get it undone ASAP before it cools down. Yeah. Okay. Don't don't just stop and have a, like a little bit of a think or a relax. Immediately undo it so it's it, whilst it's still hot, and get it out, and then start all over again. Particularly aluminium. Do not. Because it will seize up in there, won't Once it? it binds, stop straight away and take it back out. And have that little thread cutter and just run it through whatever you're doing. M might be a bit of a pain in the butt to do that, but it'll be worth it in the long run. Especially when you come to work on it again. Yeah. And there's nothing like, you know, aluminium particularly. You can you can salvage aluminium really easy if you stop. As soon as you feel it bind or, or kind of lock up, you stop straight away. Well, that's the beauty of doing it with by hand and not with a Makita. Yeah, and then you, you take it out and you just run the thread, just you tap your, like the one Brett used on this, just run it through there, clean the threads up, and you'll find then the, if the screw looks a little bit marked, like it's shiny, if it's a black screw and it's all shiny, don't use it again. No? No, because you've pulled the threads. <clears throat> oh, ho, <laughs> ho. That is a good feel in front box, mate. For one of these, these are usually quite graunchy and grindy and... Look at those flat arms, mate. What are you, are you like, I'll get back in the center of the camera. Mm -hmm. Like, it looks like an airplane almost. Does it make noise? Zing, zing. Oh, I thought you were gonna, gonna give it one of those ones. No, nah, I'm just gonna add some droop to it because I don't like the look of it. Don't like the look of it? No, nah, I think it's... You don't like droop screws, it's not your thing. Well, that's because, be that's because I, I, I raised 10 scale. That's loose. That's loose. You raised 10 scale, you say? I try to. I'm making, a, I'm making an appearance, and that's about as good as it gets. And run a club, and run a herd of kids, hey? Uh, yeah. And still sticks it at the front of the grid. Champion. So... Sway bar. Is it in? Look how sloppy jalopy the sway bar is. Yeah, that's okay for the moment. No, it's not. <sighs> I, I want to. I want to do that. You want to do it? Yeah, because we've had too no, many. No, not in there. Jeez, the wrong hole. And we've had too many. Oh, it'll be the first time tonight. Just take it easy. So tiger. just screw it in until. Can you see what he's doing? A bit of wiggle and a tickle. Yep. Until you feel it. A bit of end float. Oh, there you go. Stop now. And you see that still falls under its own weight a little bit more so that one's pretty good we'll go to the other side you lose a bit of feeling with the other one if you wiggle it backwards there look at that that's it a bit of backwards and forwards motion there it's all by feel and practice if you have the sway bar bound too tight well it's going to be like you've gone extra heavy on the sway bar yeah and be all inconsistent. And, and you won't be you won't be able to pass people like Brett on the inside. Mate, oh, they can pass me while I'm upside down. So, so look, look at that, like that's. Right. You watch. I just. Oh. There you go. That was like less than a quarter of a turn. Oh. It's all those one percenters, mate, that make all the difference. Yeah. Now I've gone on to bag F six. Yeah, you're pretty chuffed with yourself. Look at it. It is a tough looking buggy. Rub it. Tell it you love it. Ooh. Yeah. I'll leave that up to you and Gran. All right. Um, so I've got these real heavy duty universals here. Universals are awesome. They're all pressed together, so they're pretty much a non serviceable item. You know what I love about these things? Mm -hmm. They're quiet and you don't have to grease them. Yep. I do actually prefer CVs from my on roading days. Um, Why? But yeah. Why? I just think they're a more effective way of transferring What's drive. the difference between a universal and a CV? Well, they drive through the centre of the shaft. The CV is freer? Mm. 
I mean, the universal is freer, sorry. A CV mechanically binds more. Yeah, but no, I don't know. I, they, I, I just like them, and I think they look cooler. They look more high-tech. You can't, you can't get a... <clears throat> you cannot get a CV to... I'm not going that far, don't worry. Well, how are you going to take the inside line? Enough said. That animal. Enough said. Look at this. What, what have we got here? What are we looking at? Tell the viewers what we're talking 17. about. Seventeen point five L. And I've got a. Oh, I've got the wrong one. I've got R. Uh, oh, yeah. hang on. Wrongs with it. They've already pre-installed the bearings. Really? Press fit. They got rubber rubber shield bearings. We've got two degrees steering blocks. Standard is a setup on these cars. All aluminium parts. All already, right. already standard in the kit. Aluminium parts. Even these are lightweight aluminium. <clears throat> and. It's all CNC machine stuff. Really cool. Anodized. Got grub, you got you got the grub screws to hold the yeah, I'm really <clears> reluctant <throat> to let you need this little bag of parts. If it's anything like one mil I haven't mil lost a single part yet, Brett. Where's that one mil shim by the way? Uh, I can pass it to you. <laughs> <laughs> I did definitely pass it to you, mate. Alright, no worries. Alright, so what are we doing? We can get the car out of the way for the moment. Uh, cars on my side. Do you want to do the left one or the right one? Oh, we're going to assemble the caster blocks, steering, yeah. the front steering blocks. Yep. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to do left. You can do left. right. Righty tidy, yeah. lefty leafy. Yep. Right. So we've got. So how do you know which R is left and right on these? Because you They're notice. Clearly marked. They got an angled. They're angled and the dots are on one side. They've oh. got these little five dots. Yep. They're on one side. <coughs> What's the five dots for? Um, so there's five increments of these Ackerman plates. So it indicates the actual Ackerman. And, yeah. And the kit setup for these is five dots, which is the least aggressive. The most Ackerman? Yes. Is that correct? The most Ackerdackers. Right. Is that what we're saying? Well, I'm asking you. So if you assemble it dots up, Er. So do you know which way it's going? I can't see because of the glare. The glare? The glare come from from the monkey light. So if I'm doing left. You're doing left. Yep. You're doing these ones. It's gotta go that way. Ackerman plate on top. Yep. Which means the dots point downwards. Downwards? Yes. Downward dog. So that's pointing down as well. Yep. And, so you, the and you need the button head screws, metric 3 by 10. I'm going to take two before you get in there and lose them. Um, before something happens to them, I mean. And they and go they all go the way in through. From underneath. Yep. And then you get two. I'll grab these as well. You get two 5.5 nuts. So what's interesting is they haven't tapped the aluminium. I think that's great. Why do you think that? Because you can't strip the thread in it then. Well, it's true. Right, so if you damage the thread, it's just the, just the bolt and nut you've got to get rid of, you know, like get new ones. You're not really going to damage the thread here though, are you, surely? Maybe. <coughs> oh, there's no pleasing you sometimes. It wasn't meant to be easy. Well. How's that looking? Mine's fine. I don't know about yours, but mine's fine. Mine's backwards. Really? Can I have a can I have a drive shaft, please? You can definitely have a drive shaft, I think. So, just drop the drive shaft through the. Uh, you, did, these already come with the bearings in them, did you say? Yeah. So I did not put them in. So, the, I wonder how tight a press fit they actually are. Uh, they're not really very the, tight. They come out. Okay. Look at these big pin. Thank you. This. We've got a little bit of a grub screw there. So we just stick the pin in. You probably want to uh, put the hex on there, mate. Okay, through the. I'm oh, just seeing if it goes. You want to make sure that's level. There's no shim There's at no all. Shim. Okay. There's no shim. Shim shim. Things like the name of a um And what size grub screw? Four mil. Oh yep, the big one. The big end. Have you got the big end there? Yep. With a two mil driver. Use some Loctite 
definitely use a bit of Loctite. They don't have to be wildly tight. All it's doing is retaining the And the screw pinning, it down the guts. Which is a really good idea, especially when you have what? Um, closed end wheel nuts. With open end wheel nuts, it can be a bit painful because you get all dirt and stuff down there. Oh, it but just jams all the mud and crap yeah, in there. Yeah, it makes it really tricky. So so if your kit comes with an open wheel, new, wheel nut, yeah. just get some closed ones. Yeah, closed end wheel nuts over the top. Um, and then What's this one come with? Uh, we'll we'll find out later. Is, I think it is open. We'll find out later. So. so I like it. It's really cool. How's yours looking, mate? Free as a bird. Free as a bird? Yep. I can hear it now. It's crying freedom. Thank you, Dokes peoples. So now we get to put the hats and stuff in, don't we? The mad and hatter. The, the, the mad hatter. And the pins and the more grub screws and a little bit more Loctite. So, has this got different hats for top and bottom? Yes. Or are they the same? Uh, there is different hats available as a tuning option. But the ones, in the, ones in the kit are, are the all the same. same. Neutral. Okay, so you don't have a big difference. No, so there's offsets of one and two you've got different colors top and bottom oh, okay so which one one is longer the black one, one goes to the top and the, the silver one, one does goes, go in the top and the silver goes to the bottom yep look at that i'm all over it i know my i know my pins pin pin now i and oh, we've got a rogue pin. Like show. I got mine in. Look at that. Is is it right? Yep, it's always right when I do it. It's not backwards. No, I'm just gonna Light grab a couple of these. No, they're the big ones, mate. Not big the ones? little ones. You want the big ones. Okay, okay. Bit of Loctite. Where are you? I'm here. Whilst we're waiting for Brett to catch up, Here what it is. Have you got there? The assembly. Look at that. It's awesome. Left hand, 17.5 degrees. What's the kick up on this? Do you know? And the chassis? Uh, I'd have to have a look in the peel blocks. I think we're around 25 degrees. So it's a combined all together. Yeah. So it's 10 degree chassis. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. This is 17.5. Yeah. Is it 10? Looks about 10 degree in the chassis. So we run it. 25. That's pretty awesome. You like that? That is a tough yeah, assembly. You're not going to break that, are you? Not even close. People don't even bend them. Not that I've seen. They don't get replaced. What have you but you bent them? Is that what you're no, no I'm just wondering what's going to happen when you drive it. No, I won't bend. You sure? I probably should. The drive I'm shaft? Not. Um, no, because the arm will just snap. I'll stop. I've replaced one. Have you? I won't mention the, the, the I won't mention the guy's name. I've done it for. Yep. But you've replaced one. I fixed it for him. Really? Yep. On a four wheel drive. On an HB. On an HB. Yep. Radio. It was actually bent. I straightened it myself. Did you? Yep. On a V block. Uh, just in the lathe. In the lathe. Yep. That's pretty fancy. I made a mandrel to go around the shaft and hold it one end and then just trude it up. That's pretty fancy of you. Uh, what have we got here? Now we're going to stick them in the arms. This is where it's going to get tricky. Why is that? What's tricky about this? Well, I get to see that you put on backwards now. So all we need is a couple of hinge pins. Now, uh, let's, let's... I am unhinged. Let's study the manual. And Manuel. Manuel. <laughs> oh, Mr. Faulty. <laughs> Where are you going with those grub screws, buddy? Mr. Faulty! Here we go, we've got some more grub screws that go in underneath. The little outer hinge pin mm. goes in from the front. Front, the front? The Your front. front or my front? No, the front. 
what's Nan gonna say? Nan has already run and watching reruns of um, Smokey and the Bandit. <laughs> Is she Smokey or the Bandit? Both. All right, so that's the color of her hair. Smoky silver. Oh, are you I'd, stealing my thunder? I thought I would jump in there, mate. You, you are just like you were struggling. Stealing my thunder. You steal my sunshine. Look at that. Is it good? It's it's done. It's cooked. You got to put some grub screws in the bottom there. Yeah, but I'll let you put your your um, pin in. Pin pin. Now it comes from the front. The pin goes in from the we front. We just got to remind Brett which end it goes in. Well, if it wasn't the pin in wrong, or if it could have been the arms on wrong. Well, whoever put the arms on must have done the right thing because it's looking like it's all matched. How good does it look? Good looking front end. Do you know what makes anything look good? Me. The addition of carbon. It is, isn't it? It's just what... <clears throat> you get rid of the plastic and you add the carbon. It just makes it so much flashier. And I think you'll find that's exactly why I've put it. It's not really... Uh gonna help me it just it just it just enhances the whole build doesn't it well it just makes it look cool makes it look tough we just flip it over one and a half and once again if the nut comes off the outer the outer hinge pin you've got two locking grub screws which stops the pin coming out so you'll finish that because nitro is such long races, you'll you'll get to finish the race. Yeah, they really were. Where EP built. because this is based off the nitro car. Yeah. The same, all the same parts. So, where tenths e buggies are like ten minutes, but nitro can be up to like an hour. Their finals. So it's just made it so much more robust to well, actually, just to finish the race. So there's a couple of safety nets in there. Yeah. There? Yeah. Well, there's more than one. So, I mean. It's going to be really difficult for you to break this car, Brett. Um, I can't see you ever having a DNF with this. No. Can you, can you wipe the excess off, please? To keep the shiny look to it. Oh, oh! Look at that. We've got arms and bones everywhere. Look at it. I'm excited. Are you excited? Oh, just riveting. There we have it, folks. We've just Are taken, we going to turn the page? We've just taken three hours to put on a pair of arms in a hub. What's some big nut? What about the F7? F7. 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 It's just F7. such a tiny little bag. It's not the size of the bag. It's what it is. It can. Um, is that right? All right. What's in the bag? What's in the bag? I need to put them in, in there just in case Brett loses them. It's a good little parts tray, that one. Can we see that? Look at that. I've got three of them. Time. You probably would. Yeah. I do. I have three of them. Really? Yep. What are the kids going to say? Well, what, what kids did you steal them off? I didn't. One's Nathan's, one's Tamara's, and one's mine. We all done the Nationals. Did you? Yeah. 2016? Yeah. This one was signed by the Volk. My body shell signed by him. Really? Yep. Uh, is it saying to put it in that hole? Oh, I don't know. You've jumped the gun, mate. Look, like the starters. It's saying to refer to the setup sheet. Really? Yeah. So what's the setup sheet say? Can we refer to the setup sheet? We'll refer setup sheet, page thirty-three. What's it say? Hole three. Is that what you got? Oh, look, he's, he's got it right. It's actually not where I run them, believe it or not. Why not? Where would you prefer? I actually run at one hole, further laid over. Well, you should probably go up a spring rate then. No, because a lot of people, when they set these up, they actually go down. But this is going to be oh, new so, to me. So what you're saying there, a little bit oversprung standard. Mm. But I'm actually going to be putting a heavier pack in this one. All right. It's going to have a full-size nine steps, 8,000 monster in it. Wow. Yeah. Can I have the cleaning rag? Because you've got this grease everywhere. And I don't want it. On you? No. Not on your new jumper. No, it's not my new jumper. It's a good jumper. It's the jumper I'll leave at hands because I forget to bring my mine in. <laughs> Here we go. How quiet's that? It's good, isn't it? Oh, hang on, the wheels are turning them backwards. They come backwards. What have you done? Ah, oh, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> wait, till the wait till they get the program cut out. <laughs> wait till they get the program. What are we going to do now? So, Three bar links. So the, the pins. Yep. 
um, through to the sway bar links in the bottom of the arm. Yep. And then we've got to put the locking grub screw in, which is quite a long one. It's quite a, um, they're one length, they're one piece um, sway bar links on these. And you are a huge fan, aren't you? I love it, because you don't have to adjust them. I like adjusting them. Uh, well, you can be difficult. You're like that guy on that Athena ad. What's that? What about fees. Fees? Yeah, love fees. I love fees. I yeah. like fees. Yeah. The treats count? Yeah. Tree Bloody hell, how long is this? Tree hugging monkey. I think that's. I think it's in. I think you got it in there. I can't tell. <clears throat> I'm just going to hand the parts over. All right. I'm here for a, a good time, not a long time. Really? I can't believe you get anything done. Me? I get nothing done. That's not what I've done a day's work by lunchtime, mate. I can tell. I needed to. You're coming in here. Yep. I have to deal with the traffic, the onslaught. Look at this. Oh, it's good, isn't it? It goes forever. You didn't tap these, did you? I didn't tap those, no. I can tell. But it's not something that you have to talk down, mate. It just goes into a groove to stop that pin falling out. Oh, okay, radio. I reckon the front end. I really want to put the Campbell link on. Oh, we're it's too soon. We're up for F7 2. F7 2. The installation of the upper camber link. I was going to say, I hope they haven't updated the car already. That'd be nearly like an AE. No, even close, mate. Before we even built it, they updated it. No. Because we need to be at like step, I mean like stage 0.900. Here we go. Er, what have you got? Which side are we putting them? I don't know. Which which side do you want the the um <coughs> the adjuster mark? Because it depends on which one. Right, as long as they're all the same. Yeah. Um, but we must have done it this way because they they point in. There's the front one. Here, I've got it here. The front steering one. What are you doing to me? I'm just having a look at the. Yeah, so it's going to go that way. But it's, it doesn't show the bend in it. No, no, but it's the steering one. We're doing Campbell ones, mate. Because oh. you're just trying to figure out which way to put it, but because it's got the offset, offsetterage. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So we're going. So that's yours. That should be that side. Yep. And then that side. Yeah. So, yep. See it. I'm all over it. Fits perfectly. All every over time. it. So which hole are you going for? Do we need to refer to the setup sheet? Uh, we probably do. I want to say middle hole. Most people run long holes. Do you like the front end to be hold onto your steering or like? Oh, long link. C. Long link. The outer. The, outer. the most outer on the on the caster block. And where's the roll center? High roll center. Oh, highest. Lowest position on the tower. Yeah. Wow. Again, it's not Must, somewhere. So is that compensating for the overrated spring? I would say yes. And what what color springs on the front? By, by gold? Uh, yes. Gold on the front. That's what it says here. A lot of people change to yellow. Is that one rate? One rate down. Okay. And but do I they run, compensate with for, roll center? No. I usually go shorter link. And um, I changed the roll center. But you know what? I like to play out of the box sometimes. Really? Yep. So when did you come out of the box? Um, you know, a while ago. I'm pretty old. Yeah, right. Mm. Bloody noon. <laughs> you gave it a glue plug. <laughs> Don't start that <laughs> crap again. Uh, I tell you what. We got about an hour's worth of footage. We've got to wipe off this because of you. Um, well, you get that on the big jobs, mate. Yep. How you going there? You under control? Um, I've got the need for speed. How you going? I'm just kicking back, take it easy. Really? Yep. I'm just getting a bit um, like bit ready, crazy. ready for a snooze here. Really? Yeah. Just waiting for you to catch up. Why don't you use that? Ah, uh, because I get a bit, of, bit more leverage. Excuse get me. Get in there from the top. Excuse me. Get in from the top, mate. Make right. it happen. Right. No worries. Any time. Couldn't have done it. Couldn't have done it without you, mate. Could have. That is a long link, isn't it? 
Um, yeah, the long link, I don't know. I think it's... I, I would, like, because I come I, from I, 10 I, scale, no, I like a I really would have, reactive I would have, car. I would have started in the middle, the middle hole, because then if you don't like it, you can go either out or in. So if you wanted more initial steering, you go in. If you want the steering to hang on longer, you can go out. If you want. Wow. Yeah, right. Okay. Look at that, people. That is beautiful, that thing. Isn't it? Tell you what, we're actually, um, we're actually getting somewhere. Are we? we? Well, we look like we're getting somewhere. What are we doing now? Are we going further or are we stopping? Let's, let's put the steering rack in. Put the steering rack let's in get the, the buggy. Steering. We'll get, now we'll finish page 17. So we'll have a look at why we're replacing it though, while we're here. We don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> we've got shiny parts. A shiny part. <laughs> look at the... Shiny. Now, there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with these parts, but they actually use a alloy bush in the steering rack here. Oh, no. Um, the old alloy bush in the steering rack. Yeah, yeah, and that's not only common to HB, and it's really robust. Like, that does not yep. break. Mm. Does not break, but it can also get a bit of slop in it. It worked for Max. Did it? Yeah. Max loved it? Yeah. <laughs> he thought it was awesome. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, so, but these ones here is actually ball raced. So we've got two little tiny bearings, top and bottom here. And oh no, we not, haven't, I just lost them. It's not for somebody who likes to use compressed air or simple green on their cars. Because? You just blow it straight into the little um, middle shield bearing. And what happens then, Brett? Well, then the bearing sees and flogs out the, you know, it's just And then just you have nice. a really, really crappy steering. That's right. <clears throat> so the HB one is really, or, really good and really sorry, robust. I'm going to but or the steering seizes up and then it overcooks your servo. Yeah, we're going to struggle to overcook the servos, mate. And there's this Ooh, banger. It's like a hundred kilo, is it? Yeah, something like that. I haven't put a CD seven seven hundred in these. I know you do love the Fataba servos. Fataba. Yeah, the CB seven hundred. This this critter here is really giving me stress. Is it? Yep. Are you getting a bit of critter anxiety? Yep, it's just, it just keeps getting in the way. So can you see what I'm doing here? Yep, you're spinning that on there. I'm just double checking the thread. Before we go any further, and it's quite a fine thread, this is a server. You need to grease tube. that thread. You do, so it doesn't gawk, because it's metal on metal. Aluminium what? on aluminium. Aluminium on aluminium. And you can see that's beautiful engineering, like yep. isn't it? That's great quality stuff. <clears throat> Get that in there, mate. And it's all hard anodized. Hard? Yep. It'll be hard if we lose parts. Well, that's not uncommon. Got the dampener ring there. Dampener ring? Yep. Ring of confidence. Um, I usually actually cut this in half as well. Really? Yeah, because it squashes down too much and doesn't sit nice. and Right. Sits all funny. So well. Let's got, got a bit of anti-seize here. A bit of copper grease. So, I oh, hope you've already got the tube. Yep, the tube's got a nice hex where it locates into on the bottom there. Yep. Locks in. Then, do you, do you at all lube them or you just nah. leave them dry? No, nah, leave it dry, mate. I don't, want any, I don't want to attract any dirt anywhere if I can help it. Look at that. What have you got? I'm waiting for the foamy, the donut. Ah, uh, no, put that on last. I'm ready for the donut. No, no, you're putting that on, mate. You can just slip this bit on last. No. Yeah, just... yeah. But you just don't assemble it in that order. Oh. So what I'm going to do is just give it a run on the grease. Yep. Excuse me. Not really. Look at that. I just it. put a little bit of grease on the thread and I'm just going to run it down. Yep. And then I put a little bit on the face of the spring to ensure it doesn't bind, bite onto the alloy of the adjuster nut. What about the base yep. of the servo saver? Yep. Just a little smear, you don't need to dunk it in. Yep, beautiful. We'll just yep. spread that around. That's right, spread the love. Yep. Put your finger in there, mate. There you go. Doesn't have to be lights, doesn't have to be bathing in it. Oh, yeah, but you know, there's nothing like and now watch how easy this will go a to good a good lube session. Bit of half turn. Let that goes click. 
That spring is tight. Isn't it? Yep. You can see why people have dramas. Um, people are known to put vice grips on them, multi grips. They absolutely mold them. Yep. They'll cross. You just got to find them. the thread. Yep. You got it? Oh, I'm on fire. I need it together the right uh, orientation. It's not 90 degrees out, is it? Well, it will be if I turn it 90 degrees. <laughs> you idiots. <laughs> so what's the measurement? So look at it. What um, measurement? Of the spring? Yeah. No, you just wind it down. I just wind it down. So like one or two threads is revealed, otherwise it can hit on the top brace. Oh, right. The servo nut can hit on the top brace. I've already just torn the bones out of my fingers. Yeah, it's tight. You can see why people struggle. But yeah, that is really helpful, guys, to really put just a little bit of grease on there, a bit of uh, pre-assembly. Can I just get like some vice grips on there and just mangle it? That's what people do. Vice grips, uh, pliers, screwdrivers, hammer and chisel. Put it in a vice. I use chisels. Hey? I use hammer and chisels. Yeah, probably not on your servo saver nut. How's that? Are you happy with that? Yeah, it's probably a little bit overexposed, but hey. A what? And you can see why I've relieved the the foam ring down a little bit. I haven't done a very good job cutting it, to be honest. What's that for? Ah, uh, just to help keep the dust out. Oh. Yeah, yeah out right. Of the spring and the assembly. Yep. So basically, it's just stop the snot getting in there. Yeah, um, and I, like I said, I'm not somebody who really is it, is it? likes to use. Um, not somebody who really likes. You know what would work really awesome there? What? A fat O-ring. Just an O-ring. And it would look even neater. It would look neater, wouldn't it? Yeah. Because they do look a bit horrid. I have been known to take them off, but I do see the point in them. Yep. You know. But yeah, that does. Did you does get, do a did you get the job. point? Lock screw? Yep. Again, don't snap it in there. You just want to seat it. I just want to, like, I'll get, just turn it until it snaps and then I'll back right. it off a quarter of a turn. Yeah. It's not going to undo in a hurry, mate. No, that's there you go. There. Look at that. And that's just a little clamping bolt there. It just does up on the thread and it <clears throat> binds it on All so right. it doesn't undo yeah. itself. I've done my part. It's up to you now. Is it? Yeah. I couldn't have done it without you this far. So that is the Tech Precision um, steering. So we've got rubber seal bearings going on here. We've got left, we've got right. Where's the 2.5 mil? the shims where they're going away. So while, while Brett's organising that, I'm just going to stick the posts on the chassis. Make sure you lock tight those posts. Why? Can you please explain why? Um, because they are really prone to coming loose because they do up to the top deck. From the flex. The chassis brace, yeah. And they are prone to coming loose and people, um, yeah. Right. And they do locate in the chassis. I see that. This is a couple of little rebates there in the chassis. But if that um, can come loose and you can wreck the rebates. Mm. You know what I mean? Is there like a government rebate? Um, I'm not sure about that. I'm trying. Oh, just. What have you done? I just like dropped the screw in the juice. <laughs> That's the best bit. And we've got a couple of these really small shims here, which is a case by case application. Uh, what shims is that, mate? The, oh, is that for the bearings? Yeah. All right, so the, the two posts, I've got lock tighted, they're in. I'm <clears> just putting the, the tiny little bearings in and the cross tube. So that one that you've got there goes on the left side. Yep. And the servo yeah. saver goes on the right side. That's right, because that's where the servo is going to go. Yep. Cross tube. Then we've got the Ackerman plate. Now, a lot of people are using the new Truggy Ackerman plate on their buggy. But Why is that? Is there, something, is bit... there something different about it? Uh, yeah, the Ackerman measurement is different. I don't know exactly what I'm the difference being, is. I'm re being rude here because I've seen this shiny Exotech part over there and I just got all excited. I can see why. They are beautifully presented parts, aren't they? Are we... 
Is there an extra tech Ackerman plate? No. Well, no, I said some people use the Truggy one. I know that, Truggy but I'm plate. asking, is there an Exotec Ackerman no, plate? No, Because that would look really smart. Wouldn't with, it? With all the other Exotec bits and, and goodies. And it would absolutely look beautiful. Uh, what size screw goes through the Ackerman plate? Da, 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 da. It is... 3 by 12 Yep. Tapered head screw. Tapered head screw. Uh, these ones will be longer, though. Yep. Because we're putting nuts on there. That's why they're in the kit. And I've got my little washers. Have you have you taken have you taken my scalpel? I could have done. They've given me a free little shim. How good is that of them? Just excuse me again. Please do. I'll just There's the uh look at that. That's awesome. The top brace. Yep. Well, we'll get to get that on in a second, won't we? It's all CNC aluminium, nicely finished. Got the uh, the orangey tin, you know, like the. What do you call it? You call it orange anodized. Well, it kind of looks orange, but it's actually it's almost got a bit of brownie red to it. Ah, oh, I know where this is going. I'm just saying. Yeah? yeah just, it's not like a pure orange. It's got like a bit of a browny red tinge to it. Are you trying to bring brown back? It looks like candy gold. Candy gold? Yeah. Just like my body shell. That'd, my be, a, that, that'd be a good looking colour, wouldn't it? It is. It's awesome. You, I reckon you should paint a car that colour. All over it. Yeah? Yeah. Next time we go on road, you promise that you'll yeah. have a... Yeah? yeah. We're going to go on road this week. I don't know. The I weather's looking a bit dicey, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I don't think I'm good enough. Yeah, a lot of people um, you know, suffer that fate, but pick with me, mate. You'll be right. Yeah. I'm not even sure if I'm doing this on camera at the moment. Do you need any shims, or is it all? Is it? Uh, did you lube up the little inserts into the aluminium? What, the, are, you, what are you doing? Do you know what you're doing, mate? The crush tubes. Yeah. Do you have any idea what's going on here? Yes, mate. Oh, that's good. I'm, I'm really, really glad. I'm trying my very best. I know it's hard for you. I'm, I am trying. So, the, the bearings... Is there spaces in between the bearings? Yes, there's a crush tube. Oh, okay. That's supplied with the actual hardware. Yeah, yeah with the hardware. And it's a predetermined size, or do you have to shim the crush tube? No, it's a predetermined size. So, and I haven't had a drama with it yet. They do give like a 0.1 shim, shim, and that's just so that Ackerman plate is clear off the off the, the top. So, is it firm or is it loose? No, it's beautiful. Jeez, like it is. Touch it. See what you think. I can go on the steering post. That's pretty good, actually. And it's like not much towards me, is it? It's got no. It's got no. Um, Hold that while I just nip these. It's got no slop in it, and um, it's definitely, definitely going to give you a sharp response in your steering. Like there's nothing there at all. It's and it's not going to get sloppy, is it? No. Not no. until those little bearings collapse. But if I look after it and don't blow simple green into it, well. Is that the right way? Yep. Let's give it a wiggle. I don't think so. What do you mean you don't think so? No, get it down, mate. Order it away. Jeez. Yeah? Look at that. You'll be steering like this. It'll be that quick you won't even see it move. No. But look at it. That is a piece of art, isn't it? That is very, very nice. Get that bit on. Do we get that bit on? So Let's have a look in the book. Oh, <laughs> stop it. Stop it, go away you. I can see why Gran stays in the basement. Then oh, 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 oh. Look at all this red crap you've got everywhere. What who's Hello, what's happened? You're bleeding. We've had an injury. Oh Nan will be upset now. Uh, I'll tell you what. Then put blood on the carpet. We this is blood, uh, sweat and tears have gone into the We have to field. get Pyro in here now. <laughs> He's on reruns. And that's what Nan's watching. That's right. What are these two screws left over for? Uh, they're the old ones from the rack. Oh, so we don't need them? No. I don't, at all? I don't believe we do. What are we putting in the top here? Well, it says flathead screw metric 3x12, which we've used. 
Yep. We've used those two. Yep. Well, what are the where do these two go? Because they're the three. Because in the Exotech kit, we got new ones. Because oh, these please, ones please are explain. Because these ones are longer. Because they've got a nut on them. Oh, so they're the, the Exotech ones. ones. Yeah, these are Exotech screws. Right, you didn't say they were the Exotech ones. These are the Exotech okay. ones. Wow. <laughs> so next is this top neck, plate. Neck minute. Neck minute is the top plate, and the, the brace. I like G the center. Braces. The center brace. Brace yourself. Yep. Are you braced? Is th this brace is adjustable by the looks of it? Yeah. I I. Ugh, I remember the one I had. Look. Wasn't adjustable. Wasn't it? I don't think so. Have a look at those two things, mate. Tell me what you can see. Um, I can see one's plastic and one's aluminium. Yeah. Now, to be honest, the kind of racing that I do and a little bit of forgiveness in the car, especially You'll need that the part. Aluminium. The plastic's probably not a bad idea. Plastic but will <laughs> give you plastic will give you a bit more forgiveness. That's right. It'll take away that rigid Forgive me. Feel that that like really sharp response. But uh, I thrive on this sharp response. And it looks really, really cool. Okay. So we're in for the cool stuff. Yep. Uh, I think so, we're so, put the brace on first. So what's, what goes memories. here? What goes here, the brace? Gonna put a bit of assembly lube. Bit of assembly lube. Oh, the brace mounts from underneath anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. So we can still smash this on. Where's the hammer and cold chisel? I never like cold chisel. Uh, it's not my thing. It's probably no. your thing. No. No? No. Really? Oh my god. What's wrong, man? Just been a bit clumsy, that's all. Nothing new, nothing to see here. Clumsy potato? How are you going with that? Good, I'm just wondering. What? No. Give me five mil. Nan? You need to pop the balls in those ends. Why? Oh, it's five and a half. Yeah. Of course it's five and a half. I that's why you've got... I do it on camera so people can That's why see. you've got the Aramax spanner. Is that the Aramax one? That is a little Aramax spanner, yeah. That's the one you use for... All sorts of things. Like? It's really good for putting the, the ball ends for the, the arms on a... Um, BD11 actually. Oh, the ones on the chassis? Mm. Yep. Mm. <clears throat> Here we go. What's wrong? Are you getting antsy? No, don't get antsy on the, no, don't get quiet. No, no, no. I no. feel you're getting quiet. I'm just taking a moment to... This is to, the second week in a row. I'm taking a moment to take it all in. This is the second week in a row that you've had glasses on. Yeah, that's because I'm blind. Um, really? Yeah. Didn't you know that? Um, well, potentially. I'm just sort of making this nice and square. Jeez, this mouse. <laughs> it's just doing my head in. It's giving you dramas? Yeah. I don't uh, know. BJ must put it there just to annoy the crap out of me. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's exactly what he does. BJ, don't do it again. Excuse me while I lose my little balls. Once again, that awesome tool. Isn't it? Put it in a nice shiny side. Yep. Smash it in. Like so. What do you want me to do with that? You, you're putting it in. It's on your am side. I? Yeah. Where am I putting it? Well, <clears throat> if you want to make it easy, I'll that's a, oh, what have you done now? Nothing. Just making it easy for you, mate. I think this hey, one bro. has to come out as well. Because it goes like that. And then there should be a washer, which is this nice shiny steel one. And then the nut. Don't worry about that end. That end's fine. What are you doing? I have to take the hand off. You don't. No, you do because you see where the nut comes in from the back? Yeah, but that's only because you can't do it. No, it's too long. I've had, I've done this before, mate. Oh, There's actually a little trip that I'll show you towards the end of the build. Yeah. 
a, with a packet of orange shims. <laughs> hey, I packet give, of orange shims. I give it a good going over. Wow. It's amazing what it can do. I just need a two mil driver to complete my task. There you go. Thank you. Doing that one. This is all very simple stuff, isn't it? Yeah, but it's still time consuming nonetheless. So it comes from the bottom. Yep. Is there a washer underneath that? Yes, but where is the washer? Because there was only one in the tray. Is there a washer to go underneath that? It shows a washer here and it shows a washer up at the front. You've been at it again. I'm sorry. Clearly. I'm going to have to say this. If this continues, I won't, I won't be too. Clearly, well, I'm going to put some orange shims in there later anyway. So that's oh, right. that's why you've got the orange shims. What's in bag G3? Um, that orange will be, shims. That will be for the rear hubs, I reckon. Really? Or it could be for the bump steer. Probably because we're doing the front, it's probably going to be for the bump steer. Why do you think the washer's on there? A bit of a safety for the ball, I'd say. So if you have a, like a, a really bad bingle and hit something, the flex doesn't pop it off? Well, even if it does like pop off, it doesn't like pop out and jam into your diff. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. referring to. You don't get no extra pop-offs. Bit of Loctite. Bit of Loctite. Nothing like a bit of Loctite for an 8 scale. They do thrive on it. Yeah. That won't be the last time that these screws have to come out. Lock it all in there. Lock it in, Eddie. Lock it in? Yeah. I want to phone a friend. Except I don't have any. And then took me phone. Yeah, well, you being irresponsible again. Hey? You being irresponsible again. I used up all the internet, didn't I? Yeah, what you... Or like... the, gig the gigabits. Look at this. It's like a team... Look! It's starting to look like a buggy. Clearly. Folks. Clearly. I actually really like to put the nut underneath here. I, I think we have a problem here. Houston? Does that go there like that? Yeah. It's, it's very long. A, it's a bit of an angle. It's very, very long. It is very long, and I, I, I think we should tap it. They get very tight. I'm just saying. All right. Yeah? You talked me, in, you, you talked me into it. We're going we're gonna to tap it. Not with the four mil. Why not? Oh, it's because they're three mil. Yeah. See, I knew that. We could put bigger bolts in there for later. <laughs> How we coil them? <laughs> no, I just put bigger ones in. Just smash them in there? Yeah. With a cold chill's <laughs> lamb. See, look, it's even tight with the tap. Yep. Do you lube up the tap? No, I don't really want to introduce any. Why not? Because I want to get the stuff out of there if I can. Oh. I actually should have done this before. You should the have. assembly went in, because I'm going to go... <laughs> and blow the dust everywhere. Do you know what I mean? I think you just bottomed out. Looks like you just bottomed out. How can you tell? I'm just curious, why isn't that a bigger handle to hang on to? Um, because it's not as trendy. Right. Okay. It's designed for lightweight and carrying the toolbox, mate. It's, yeah. It's travelling overseas I'm talking just racing. like, I'm talking like this size handle to give you a bit more leverage. On, Probably because you get the end files just swinging off and breaking them. As opposed to just putting their three mil Allen key through there and just helicoptering that son of a gun. All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Look at that. You like that? It's just flying in. Hey, good tap, isn't it? You can pick on your little tap with a little handle, but yeah. it's actually not a bad little jigger. It, it's actually done the job very, very well. Um, but it's nice and sharp. But you see, the most disconcerting thing, I suppose, is a little bit of an angle. Well, you know, it's, it's not going in straight. Well, it's not a problem because the hole's not straight. Yeah, I know, but most. Some people, most you, you, you on a Makita, you were going to say something that was way past your pay grade. What's that? You're gonna you're gonna assume that most people are gonna stuff it up. Some people will. You'll be surprised how many gearbox cases we um we sell. <laughs> really? Probably the number one um, for strip threads. Yeah. Just is that just the strip threads? Nothing yeah. else. Which threads? Um. So the bottom ones. The sway bar ones. Oh, okay. What the actual the, the bottom ones and these top ones here? They yeah. strip them all, mate. Right. Okay. Nothing else. <laughs> no. 
Look at that, don't need to. So we're going to leave the shavings in there for a bit of fibre. <laughs> bit of grr. Look at that, that made all the difference. You can feel it. Did you put Loctite on these ones? I did put Loctite on those ones. Yep, I wasn't actually uh, And present. that, that is... The step of G2. G2, we <laughs> have made it. We have made it to G3. We're like halfway, look at that. Yeah, keep going little fella. Halfway. Let's just do this. Which one? G3, and then we're going onto the rear of the car. So let's finish the front. Really? Yeah. You want to keep going? It's just the two steering links. You are mad. We're going to go for it. All right. Going for broke. We're going big. Go hard or go home. I'm going home. <laughs> go hot bodies or go home. Or oh, HB racing. Sorry. Look at this. So what's going to happen? Is Gran going to let you in the door tonight? No. Not with that attitude. All right. You smell like Nitro X. Where have you been, boy? <laughs> you didn't take your grandmama. <laughs> Uh, stop it. You bring out the best in me. Um, this one's assembled wrong. Why? Why? What's wrong? What have you done? <laughs> it's, uh, backwards time. Backwards. What do you mean? Put it on the other side, you dodo. Turn it up the other way. Like that. Where's this one looking? I've got the left, I do the left. All right. You just get your hands off. <laughs> How much bumps do we putting in? Heaps. <laughs> <coughs> it's amazing that they actually tune with bump steer. Um, it's something that I actually really like to eliminate. You do, you tune with bump steer, you bump in everyone then steer away. I steer bump into them. Bump steer, coming through. <laughs> Lapping! <laughs> yeah. It's just me again. <laughs> Are you right? Are you yeah. going to use all the shims? Yeah, well, I'm using what the manual tells me to use. Okay? You worry about your side of things, I'll do mine. Well, typical. Okay? Typical Healy. Yeah. What tip from here? Oh. All over it. Alright? Mm. You can just wait your mm. turn, mate. Alright? Alright? So I'm just admiring it. It is a thing of beauty. I do like the orange. It looks cool. The Exotec makes it pop. Yep. Multi pop, can't stop. Is that threaded? Oh. I'm just gonna get it straight, mate. I was just checking to see if you're on board with it. All right, you get your side on, and we'll tighten them up when we're done. All right. All right. Let's let's see. Let's see. How many goes Brett has a go at doing this? Now, are you ready, Brett? Nope. Do you I know haven't been you? ready for a long time. What are you doing? You're coming in here, distracting my business. This Which hole are you in? You're in the middle hole. Look at all the slop you've in there. What are you talking about? Do you know what you're doing? Do you, have you got any idea what you're doing? I didn't assemble them. There's a good thing about this tool. Yeah. What's that? Is that it popped out into your hand. Oh, right. Yeah? Yep. Is that what we're saying? So this side here actually have to pop in the other side. You put it in back to front again. This side here actually have to pop in the other side. It just comes so natural to do that. Yeah, I see. Doesn't it? I see. Because yeah. there's not left and right sides. Did you just break it? No. Because it's not natural to that side. Get it? I got it. Those pliers are just such a valuable tool. Otherwise you're in struggle town, aren't you? Well, you just end up mauling the actual plastic end or the aluminium. When All the time. When you're trying to put them in sometimes because they're so tight. Put two over here. Yep. Pop goes the weasel. <laughs> the therapy bill is high at the end of one is of it? these sessions. You know it. You wouldn't have it any other way. I really don't like these one mil shims. You reckon they should have been two mils? Yeah. But they do. So, when so you the one mils are like that. It's because you've got four mil of adjustment. When you do your caster, they recommend yeah. you change these shims. 
What? Because obviously you're, cha cause you're changing your bump steer. So really? You keep your bump steer the same. Why does that happen? Do you know? Because you're changing the correlation between the Cor ball here. Cor you heard it, correlation. And the, the word, and the rack. The word of the day is correlation. Why does it do it? Why does it do it? Because it's such a radical um, no, arc what, of what's, operation. What's the actual effect? Bump steer. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is like going to the dentist and having your teeth pulled. By who? <laughs> the dentist. <laughs> See, it's you're where lucky. it belongs. You're lucky. You so are when lucky. you change the caster, why does it change the bump steer? Because you're changing the height of that ball end, the ball cup. Yeah, why? Because you... I'm trying to get you to actually give the proper explanation, but you just... Because you're changing the, the distance of You need of to be the... a politician. The distance off of the ground, isn't it? Here, you're changing that distance. Because because the caster block angle changes, it ri rises the outer Ackerman plate or lowers it, which affects the bump steer either in or out. Yes. Okay. So, if, <clears throat> so, so we've just set it up for the factory so settings. So it's 17, 17 and a half degrees is your standard caster block. I if mean. you went if you went to a 15 degree caster block, the hot setup, you would need to take shims out from underneath the top. Yes. But if you went the other way, you went to a 20 degree caster block, you, you would need to take the shims out from the bottom and add them to the top. Otherwise you're changing two things at once. Well, you, you're, actually, you're actually changing the way the actual steering link operates when the suspension compresses up and down, which affects the amount of bump steer or um, but, no bump steer. Which, which I is, really don't like bump steer. Bump steer, I don't, no. A lot of, a lot of A-scale guys use bump steer. Do they? They have them bump, they have them bump out. Do they? Hmm. Why is that? Well, it gives you more Ackerman. But why don't they just change the Ackerman plate? Well, it makes it easier to drive. When it bumps out, it actually gives you a little, a little bit more, like a less aggressive steering. Bump and grind. Bump and grind. We're, we're cooked. How good is that? Oh, oh my lord. It is starting to look like a buggy, folks. Tell you what, Brett would have been in trouble if I hadn't turned up tonight. These are, well, took a cheese those front arms. I feel sorry for the videographer who's going to edit this one. Well, she's going to earn her money for doing this one. <laughs> Definitely going to earn her money, no doubt about that. So I'm just going to button up these ones here. Just got to keep it real. <laughs> All right, guys, that is episode four of the HB Racing yep. E819 it was, RS build. It was it was fun. We had everyone involved. We had we, did. we had men. She joined in for a bit, didn't yep. she? We've got the front end on. We've fitted some really cool Exotech parts. The, Ex the Exotech stuff really does make it look great, doesn't it? With the carbon additions. Mm. The Exotech. I mean, when it's all together, it's just... Hey, what colour electronics? Like, what is the speedy colour? They're going to be black and gold. Oh. So it's not going to be matchy But it will be, it'll be kind of be close. It'll be cold. It will be, it will it'll be, be cold. Be cold. Right? It will be close to gold, not orange. But I get where you're coming from. Yep. It will be awesome. <laughs> all right, guys. I'm Brett and this is Simon. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. See ya.